not too bad. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Sully here. Over the years, I've uploaded several videos featuring my dad's carbide cannon, and the most frequent thing that I've been asked is, how did you build it, or where did you get the idea from? I cannot take any credit for the idea or the build. The idea came from William Gerstel's great book, Backyard Ballistics, which I stumbled across at a Barnes & Noble one day and then found at my library and eventually got as a Christmas gift. Just this year, he released the 10th anniversary edition, and it has a couple new projects. I've not had a chance to check out that edition yet, but I did get a chance to meet him up at Maker Faire in Detroit in the summer of 2012. He's a really cool guy, and he has several other great books out there, including two project books, The Art of Catapult and The Practical Pirate Maniac. I recommend them all. As I said, I cannot take credit for the build either. Um, I've done quite a few projects from the book Backyard Ballistics, uh, but I've only posted videos about the carbide cannon, and that was done by my dad. I have here a few pictures, and as you can see, there are a few differences between Bill Gerstel's cannon and ours. First, Gerstel used a cross in the back, and we used a T. Uh, he loaded his from the top, and we instead uh, used a threaded breech uh, from the back, uh, and added a wooden ball back there for uh, decoration. Probably the most significant difference between his and ours is that he uses a PVC frame and we wanted to add a bit of realism so we made a wooden naval carriage uh, for the first one since my dad was is a Navy veteran. And then because he's a fan of the Civil War history and uh, we made an army carriage uh, with wagon wheels for the second one and those wagon wheels were probably the most expensive part of the whole thing. Also we spray painted it black. And the last difference actually came from Backyard Ballistics again. Uh, in his project on the potato cannon, he used a lantern sparker in the back to ignite uh, the um, fuel there. And we just incorporated that into the carbide cannon as well. Unfortunately, we did not document the build process. But my dad has created a how-to guide based off of William Gerstel's book as well as a few other online resources. I'll include a link to the PDF down in the doobly-doo. So anyway, here's some old and new footage of the cannons. More like it. I didn't have the ball in there that time. Because I thought that may have been what was causing the issue. Try it again. That was warm. Yeah, I saw the fire. That was definitely warm. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, to load the carbide cannon, you begin with about four, five ounces of water, pour that into the combustion chamber basically a T with a cup at the bottom. Just plug in that. Place a couple granules of calcium carbide in the end of the loader. Goes in through the breech. As you tighten the uh, plug in, it will dump the carbide into the water, which will then form a settling gas. Can is equipped with a sparker. So after the water's in, you give it a few seconds for the gas to form, turn the sparker. If you'd like to build a cannon, check out the directions below. If you make one, leave a video response of it in action. Or if you have questions as you build it, leave a comment or shoot me a message. Also, if anyone would like to document their build process, that'd be great if we could get that out and share it as well. Lastly, I've used the calcium carbide reaction to create a settling glass for quite a few other chemistry demonstrations. If you've not checked out those videos, click on one of the annotations underneath here. And if you've enjoyed this, please hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. There's a bee on it. Haha, <laughs> I wish you would <laughs> 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 <laughs>